Joe Hendry is the local hero, but could he be NXT's hero when it comes to the quarter hour ratings? We are about to find out. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. Time to break down now the WWE NXT ratings for July 9th, 2024. Now, it was a pretty good rating for NXT considering the week before they plummeted. They were down at like the mid 500,000 mark. So this is a decent increase after a really bad week for NXT. Still not what they were doing a month ago when they were in that 700,000 territory. They got over 700,000 for four weeks in a row, which was really good. But since then, it's no surprise that things have um, died down. But this week, we obviously got Joe Henry returning. It wasn't announced. It wasn't promoted. How did that fare in the ratings? Well, we're about to look at the numbers right here, right now. So quarter one, we got 8, 8, 8, 8 o'clock to 8.15. It was Heatwave recap. Ethan Page, Trick Williams, Sean Spears, Javon Evans with a live angle. And then Ava, Carmen, Petrovich and Ariana Grace with a backstage angle. Kicked off the show. 735,000 fuels and and then we begin to see the downward trend so this seems to happen with NXT uh, you know they seem to start off okay in quarter one but then people just quickly tune out so quarter two 15 to 38 Lexus King Tony D cut a promo we get Grace versus Petrovich we get a post match with JC Jane Jasmine Nix and Fallon Henley uh, Brooks Jensen is in there with Ava and a backstage angle minus 10% 664,000 so almost what 70,000 down after the first segment there, not good, first quarter even, so yeah, big loss there. Uh, quarter three, Tony D versus Lexus King, Brooks Jensen, Josh Briggs, backstage angle, this went up 4%, so the people like Tony D and Lexus King or are people enjoying this Brooks Jensen, Josh Briggs, backstage stuff, I don't really know, um, it could just be people that want to see whatever was happening in quarter two. This Brooks Jensen thing, you know, at least they're doing something with them. They're getting Shawn Michaels involved. That that can't be a bad thing. But, um, yeah, I just don't really want to see Ava Rain and, and Brooks Jensen in the ring, cutting a promo and having a live angle. For me, that is no good. Quarter four, though, speaking of no good, 8.45 to 9pm, we've got a Chase U backstage angle. we then got Tyreek Igwe and Tyson DuPont versus Gallas. And then a Trick Williams backstage promo, followed by a Wes Lee live promo. This went down 9%. Nobody cares about, I don't even know who Tyreek Igu and Tyson DuPont are, so I'm not going to state the obvious, but Gallas just aren't a good team, you know, there's no reason to care about Gallas, I know some people like them because they're Scottish, we're Scottish, that doesn't mean we're going to bum like them, we don't think they're good, we think they fucking suck, Gallas boys on top, well you're not on top of the ratings, the ratings suck, minus nine, down now at 634,000. We go into quarter five. We get Wesley, Sack Wentz, and Trey Miguel live angle. So we get the Rascals reuniting here on NXT. Pretty cool moment, I guess. Nice to see Sack Wentz get another chance in WWE after what happened to him last time. But still, fuck WWE. How many times have they shafted guys in the past because of allegations that turn out not even to be true? It happened with Sack Wentz. This guy never got an opportunity. He never got a second chance. He got kicked out the door. It happened with Enzo Amore. As soon as the lying bitch came out and accused him of, you know, doing things to her that he didn't, WWE released him straight away. What happened when he got proved innocent? Nothing happened. Did WWE call up and apologise? Did WWE offer him his job back? Did WWE go out in public and say we were wrong for firing Enzo Amore? Nah, they didn't do any of that shit. So, uh, you know, it's 2024, guys. It's a tough life to be a guy. Uh, anyone can just make an accusation against you and you're pretty much screwed. You don't even get the chance to defend yourself. It's no longer innocent until proven guilty. It's guilty until proven innocent. But I am happy to see Sack Wentz. I've never been a fan of the guy. I don't rate the guy. Not a fan of the rascals. Don't care for them. But the fact that he did lose his job two years ago after Stand and Deliver finally winning the titles and then lost his job because his crazy ex-wife claimed that he was beating her up you know that was that was disgusting so uh, it's nice to see him get another opportunity here and that his career's not been um not been ruined and i also believe he's dating Gigi dolan so good for him i mean he's definitely upgraded there you know he's doing well for himself so that's a massive w for sack went so fair play to him uh quarter six nine fifteen to nine thirty chase you obafemi live angle gallus backstage rascal backstage out of the mud backstage angle. We then, we then get Jensen Briggs, Ava, Robert, Robert Stone and Stevie Turner backstage. And then we then get the OC and OTM. Um, OTM, OC, who cares? Minus 4% now down to 625,000. 
not really surprised. By the way, it was nice to see also the Rascals get a nice wee increase there, three percent in quarter five, up to six hundred fifty-one thousand. That was that was pretty good to see. Uh, quarter seven, we get the OC versus OTM continued. Soul Rooker backstage promo. We get no quarter catch crew angle. Fallon Henley versus Soul Rooker, and then a post match with JC Jane, Tatum Nix, and uh, no, Tatum Paxley and Jasmine Nix. This went down 2%, down to 614 now. Boring. And then quarter 8, 9.45 to 10pm, we get Ava Turner, Ora Menza backstage. We then get Ethan Page and Sean Spears taking on Trick Williams. And his surprise tag team partner, Joe Hendry. And we do believe quarter 8 then got a 4% increase up to 638,000. And then the overrun, 10 o'clock to 10.07, we got this tag match continuing to the very end, and we got another increase here, plus 2%, to 649,000. So, yeah, guys, there you go. I mean, Joe Hendry did get an increase. It wasn't a massive increase, but when you look at the numbers, when you look at the YouTube clip, you know, once again, he is destroying everything on NXT, and it was a surprise. So, it's similar to Rhea Ripley on Raw, if they announced it beforehand or they had it happen earlier, then people have got time to react and tune in. But when it essentially happens in the main event, you know, a lot of people have already tuned it by then. Plus, it's like it's just at the end of the show. So even if people do tune right in back at the end, you're not getting you're not getting a massive um you're not getting a massive amount of people tuning in because you've left it very late. So yeah, they could have did more with this number. They definitely could have got a better number had they announced Joe Hendry. I mean, you had the opening segment with Ethan Page, Trick Williams, Sean Spears and Siobhan Evans. That seemed like, to me, the perfect opportunity to bring out Joe Hendry, bring him out in the first segment, the opening of the show, and then promote him, announce him as Trick Williams' as tag team partner on the main event. That seems to be how I would do it, but we don't, we don't see that. Back in the day... That was pretty much it. When you look at re when wrestling was good, more often than not, they used the opening angle to set up the main event of the show. Nowadays in wrestling, we, we just don't seem to get that. You know, it's all over the place. Let's be f let's be frank, man. It fucking sucks. Like sometimes you go into the main event and there's been no hype, no build, no nothing. I mean, back in the day, pretty much the opening segment was to set up the main event, and that's what they should have done here. They should have had Joe Hendry. In that opening, which kind of did set up the main event, but he wasn't in it, so it didn't set him up, you know. So, whatever, guys. Anyway, that's it for wrestling. Catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.